Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the next lesson of our tutorial series on how to use the Photon Chat plugin. For this lesson, we're going to be going over all of the code for how to send and receive private messages. So to get started, here I've built my project and I'm running two instances of my project and I'm going to click play in the editor. Now we've already covered this part, so I'm going to type in a username and click join chat and I'm going to do that for my other two standalones. Now at this point, we've also already covered how to send and receive public messages, and that is done by typing in just any chat message without having a recipient. So I could say, hello world, and click send. And here you can see that that message has been sent to all three clients. Now to send private messages, the first thing that you need to do is have an input field for typing the recipient's username, which is this input field right here. And so I can type in one of the other two usernames. So I'm gonna type in bitops, and it needs to be spelled the same way I've typed it when connecting with this client. Now let's take a look at what's happening with this input field. Here I have a public function with a string parameter assigned to the on value change event of the input field. This function belongs to the Photon Chat Manager script and it's called receiver on value change. And it's important when selecting this function that you select it from the dynamic string section instead of the static parameters. But let's go look at that function. So here we have our public void function called receiver on value change, and it has a string parameter called value in. Now in this function, you'll notice that we have a variable that we created in the last video, which is private receiver. This is the same variable that we were using in the if statement of our submit public chat on click function where we're checking to see if it was equal to an empty string. But in this function, we are setting this variable equal to our parameter. This will make it so that whatever our users type into this input field will then be saved into this variable. Now at this point, there's nothing additional that we need to do with our chat input field, but I will type a chat message to send. I'm going to type something like, hello, bitops. So once again, to review, the function paired to this input field is this function here, which is called type chat on value change. And we're just saving whatever we type into that input field to the current chat variable. Now let's look at our send button. Because if you remember, our send button had two functions paired to the onclick event. We have our submit public chat function, but then we also have this submit private chat function. And so let's look at that function, which is right here. This is a public function so that we can set it to the on click event. And this function is very similar to our submit public chat function. As you can see, we have another if statement, which uses our private receiver variable. But instead of checking to see if this variable is equal to an empty string, we're checking to see if it's not equal to an empty string. Or in other words, we've typed a recipient into this input field. Then inside this if statement, we need to call a special function for sending private messages. So we're calling our chat client variable, then dot send private message. This function requires two parameters. The first is the username for who we want to send our private message to. And for that, we're using the same private receiver variable. The second parameter is the actual chat message that we want to send, and we're using our current chat variable. After we call this function, we then want to clear both our chat input field and our current chat variable. So I have chat field dot text equals empty string and current chat equals empty string. Now that's everything that we need for sending a private message. So if I were to now click send, you can see how our chat field has been cleared out. But now let's talk about how to receive and display that message. For that, there's another special callback function, which is right here, and it's called on private message. This is another function that was added to our script when we implemented the iChat client listener interface. This function is also very similar to the onGet message function that we used for receiving public messages. It has three parameters. The first is the sender, the second is the message, and the third is the channel name. Inside this function, we're also doing very similar things to 
our on get message function, but without the for loop because these parameters are not arrays. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm creating a temp string variable called message and I'm setting it equal to an empty string. I'm then formatting our parameters, both the sender and the message parameter, so that they'll be separated with a colon and the tag private will be out in front. Once formatted, I'm then saving that new string into our message variable. And finally, we're adding the message variable with a new line character to the end of our UI text variable, which is called chat display. And that's everything that we need in order to send, receive, and display private messages. Now there's one last thing that I'd like to show you in order to help with the smoothness of your chat system, and that's found in the update function. We already talked about this if statement, which we added in our public chat message video, but I only mentioned one of the two functions that we're calling inside our if statement which was the submit public chat on click function. You can also call our new submit private chat on click function. And this just makes it so that rather than clicking the send button every time, you can click enter and it'll send your message as well. But once you have the script written, you can then save it and go back to Unity. Inside Unity, there shouldn't be any new variables that we have to set inside the inspector for our Photon Chat Manager script, but you will want to make sure that you've set the function for the on value change event of your recipient input field and that your send button has both the submit private chat and the submit public chat functions for the on click event. And once you've done all that, you should have a working Photon Chat system that can send, receive, and display both private and public messages. And that concludes the basics of how to use the Photon Chat plugin. But there is one more note that I'd like to make, and that is when we implemented the iChat client listener interface, there were a lot more callback functions that were added to our script. Most of these functions are pretty straightforward based on the names of the functions. And I would just recommend that you try to further customize what we've created in this tutorial series by implementing some of these other callback functions. All you have to do is delete this line of code that says throw new system dot not implemented exception and replace it with some other code that does a different mechanic. For example, in this onSubscribed function, you could display a bot message to the local player that says something like welcome to the chat room and then has their username. Or you could even send a hard-coded public message that says something like, so-and-so entered the chat room. Now I hope this tutorial series gave you a small taste of what's possible with the Photon Chat plugin. I want to thank you so much for watching and for becoming a supporter on our website. We'll see you next time.